whether they are affiliated with or supporting radical groups and beliefs. Very simple. We have to control the amount of future immigration into this country, and we have to prevent large pockets of radicalization from forming inside America. Not complicated. Every, and, and just think of this, take a look. Every single event, even a single individual, can be devastating. And all you have to do is take a look at what happened in Orlando and what happened in other cases, just a single event, and just one person. Can you imagine what they'll do in large groups, which we're allowing now to come here? Truly, our president doesn't know what he's doing. He's failed us, and he's failed us badly. And under his leadership, this situation will not get any better. It will only get worse, and I've been saying that for a long time. Each year, the United States permanently admits 100,000 immigrants from the Middle East and many more from Muslim countries outside of the Middle East. Our government has been admitting ever-growing numbers year after year without any effective plan for our own security. In fact, Clinton's State Department was in charge of admissions and the admission process for people applying to enter from overseas. Having learned nothing from these attacks, she now plans to massively increase admissions without a screening plan, including a 500% increase in Syrian refugees coming into our country. Tell me, tell me, how stupid is that? This could be a better, bigger, more horrible version than the legendary Trojan horse ever was. Altogether, under the Clinton plan, you'd be admitting hundreds of thousands of refugees from the Middle East with no system to vet them or to, or to prevent the radicalization of the children and their children. Not only their children, by the way, they're trying to take over our children and convince them how wonderful ISIS is and how wonderful Islam is, and we don't know what's happening. The burden is on Hillary Clinton to tell us why she believes immigration from these dangerous countries should be increased without any effective system to really to screen. We're not screening people. So why don't we have an effective screening system? We don't. We're being laughed at all over the world. The burden is on Hillary Clinton to tell us why we should admit anyone into our country who supports violence of any kind against gay and lesbian Americans. The burden is on Hillary Clinton to tell us how she will pay for it. Her plan will cost hundreds of billions of dollars long term. Wouldn't this be money better spent rebuilding America for our current population, including the many poor people already living here? We have cities, we have inner cities, we have poverty all over, and this is how we're spending billions of dollars. We have to stop the tremendous flow of Syrian refugees into the United States. We don't know who they are, they have no documentation, and we don't know what they're planning, and we won't, unless we have proper supervision and proper leadership, in which case, they're out of here. What I want... What I want is common sense. I want a mainstream immigration policy that promotes American values. That's a choice I put before the American people. A mainstream immigration policy designed to benefit America, or Hillary Clinton's radical immigration policy, designed to benefit politically correct special interests. That's all it is. We've got to get smart and tough and vigilant, and we've got to do it now, because later is too late, going to be too late for our country. The media talks about homegrown terrorism, but Islamic radicalism, and that's a very, very important term, a term that the president refuses to use, and the networks that nurture it are imports from overseas, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. Yes, there are many radicalized people already inside our country as a result of poor policies of the past. But the whole point 
is that we will be much, much, and it will be easier to deal with our current problem if we don't keep on bringing people who add to the problem, and that's what they're doing. We're letting all of these people, hundreds of thousands of people, come in, and all they're doing is adding to this incredible problem we have. For instance, the controversial mosque attended by the Boston bombers had at its founder, and as its founder, an immigrant from overseas charged in an assassination plot. This shooter, and amazingly, in Orlando, was the child of an immigrant father who supported one of the most repressive regimes on earth. Why would we admit people who support violent hatred? Hillary Clinton can never claim to be a friend of the gay community as long as she continues to support immigration policies that bring Islamic extremists to our country and who suppress women, gays, and anyone else who doesn't share their views or values. She can't have it both ways. She can't claim to be supportive of these communities while trying to increase the number of people coming in who want to oppress these same communities. How does this kind of immigration make our lives better? How does this kind of immigration make our country better? Why does Hillary Clinton want to bring people in, in vast numbers, who reject our values? Why? Explain. Ask yourself, who is really the friend of women and the LB and LGBT community? Donald Trump with actions or Hillary Clinton with her words? I will tell you who the better friend is, and someday I believe that will be proven out bigly. And by the way, the LBGT community is just, uh, what's happened to them is just so sad. And to be thinking about uh, where their policies are currently with this administration is a disgrace to that community, I will tell you right now. Clinton wants to allow radical Islamic terrorists to pour into our country. They enslave women and they murder gays. I don't want them in our country. <laughs> Immigration is a privilege, and we should not let anyone into this country who doesn't support our communities, all of our communities, every single one of them. America has already admitted four times more immigrants than any country on earth, anybody in the world, four times more, at least because we don't even know who's coming in. And we continue to admit millions more with no real checks or scrutiny. Not surprisingly, wages for our workers haven't budged in almost 20 years. You wonder why we get the crowds. You wonder why we get this tremendous support. You wonder why I've gotten more votes than any Republican in any primary in the history of the Republican Party. Take a look at that. Take a look at your security, but take a look at the wages. For 18 years, they've been stagnant. They've even gone down. So whether it's a matter of national security or financial security, we can't afford to keep on going like this, cannot afford it. We owe $19 trillion in debt and no longer have any options. Our communities from all backgrounds are ready for some relief. This is not an act of offense against anyone. It's really an act of defense. I want us all, all of us, to work together we have to form a partnership with our Muslim communities. We have Muslim communities in this country that are great, and we have to form that partnership. Now, the Muslim community, so importantly, they have to work with us. They have to cooperate with law enforcement and turn in the people who they know are bad, and they know it. And they have to do it, and they have to do it forthwith. I want to fix our schools. I want to fix our bridges. And our jobs market, we're going to have it rocket again. We're going to make great trade deals. But I want every American to succeed, including Muslims. But the Muslims have to work with us. They have to work with us. They know what's going on. They know that he was bad. They knew the people in San Bernardino were bad. 
But you know what? They didn't turn them in. And we had death and destruction. Hillary Clinton wants to empty out the Treasury to bring people into the country that include individuals who preach hate against our citizens. I want to protect our citizens, all of our citizens. The terrorist attack on Pulse nightclub demands a full and complete investigation into every single aspect of the assault. In San Bernardino, as an example, people who know what was going on, they knew exactly, but they used the excuse of racial profiling for not reporting it. They said, oh, we thought so, but we didn't want to use racial profiling, which was probably an excuse given to them by their lawyer so they don't get in trouble. We need to know what the killer discussed with his relatives, parents, friends, and associates. We need to know if he was affiliated with any radical mosques or radical activists, and what, if any, is their immigration status? We have to know, and we have to know fast. We need to know if he traveled anywhere and who he traveled with. We need to know and we need to make sure every single last person involved in this plan, including anyone who knew something but didn't tell us is brought to justice. So when people know what's going on and they don't tell us and we have an attack and people die, these people have to have consequences, big consequences. <laughs> America must do more, much more, to protect its citizens, especially people who are potential victims of crimes based on their backgrounds or sexual orientation, as you just saw in Orlando. It also means we must change our foreign policy. The decision to overthrow the regime in Libya, then pushing for the overthrow of the regime in Syria, among other things, without plans for the day after, have created space for ISIS to expand and grow like nobody has ever seen before. These actions, along with our disastrous Iran deal, have also reduced our ability to work in partnership with our Muslim allies in the region. That is why our new goal must be to defeat Islamic terrorism, not nation building. No more nation building. It's never going to work. And by the way, we've spent almost $5 trillion over the years on trying to nation build in the Middle East, and it has been a complete and total disaster. We're further away now than we were 15 years ago. For instance, the last major NATO mission was Hillary Clinton's war in Libya. That mission helped unleash ISIS on a new continent. I've said NATO needs to change its focus and stop terrorism. We have to focus on terrorism, and we have to stop terrorism. Since I've raised that criticism, and it's okay, I've gotten no credit for it, but these are minor details, NATO has since announced a new initiative, front page of the Wall Street Journal, four days ago, focused on just that. America must unite the whole civilized world in the fight against Islamic terrorism. <laughs> much like we did with communism during the Cold War. We've tried it. President Obama's way doesn't work. He gave the world his apology tour. We got ISIS and many other problems in return. That's what we got. Remember the famous apology tour. We're sorry for everything. I'd like to conclude my remarks today by again expressing our solidarity with the people of Orlando who have come under this horrific attack. When I'm president, I pledge to protect and defend all Americans who live inside our borders. Wherever they come from, wherever they were born, I don't care. All Americans living here and following our laws, not other laws, will be protected.